Greetings in this Advent season as we come to the end of the Advent season. Let me thank the, um, the members of the College of Bishops for sharing with us across the year in the connecting, uh, the connection, connecting with the connection uh, through their monthly uh, meditations. Thank each of them for sharing with us during the, during the past several months. It is my task now to uh, bring to, to us the last uh, meditation for the connecting to connection uh, in this season of Advent. So let me, um, let us pray. God, give, we give thanks to you for this day and for this season and for this church. We thank you for our 151st church uh, anniversary celebration. Lead and guide us as we move forward into the 152nd year of our existence. Bless us in this season of Advent. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a passage of scripture that I want to lift up. It's from the uh, second chapter of the Gospel of Luke and I want to read verses 6 and 7. So it was that while they were there, the days were complete for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. And that's Luke chapter 2, verses 6 through 7 from the New Revised Standard Version. And I just want to, uh, in, uh, to title or give a title to this uh, meditation I want to entitle it uh, Beyond the Manger, Beyond the Manger. As we near the end of the Advent season and celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Christ child, let us revisit the place where the record tells us was the place of his birth. The place, this place is called in scripture a manger. So says the writer of the Gospel of Luke. You heard it mentioned as I read the scripture from chapter two of Luke's Gospel. Luke's mentioning of the, ma of the manger leads us to conclude it to be a place of significance in telling the story of the birth of Jesus. He was born in a manger because as the writer tells us, because there was no room in the inn. It was no happenstance that Jesus was born in a manger. A former colleague of mine, a former colleague of mine once suggested that other than the overcrowding fact that it had taken place in Bethlehem, the manger enters the birth story of Jesus as a result of Joseph and Mary doing what many of our people have done down through the years, and that was making do. I want, to, I want us to take notice of the manger as it relates to the birth story of Jesus. As we do, let us agree that the manger is, is just a much just, that the manger is just as much a part of the Jesus birth story as peanuts are to baseball and turkey is to dressing. Humor me, if you will. We get a glimpse of this when we hear the words of one of the Advent hymns titled, Away in a Manger, No Crib for His Bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he laid. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. What I'm trying to suggest is that the manger matters to the story. It is a part of the story of the birth of Jesus. It is where Jesus makes his first appearance. It is the place where his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, first lay eyes on him. The manger is the birthplace of the King of Kings. The manger matters not just because of who was born there. The manger matters because of what the manger baby does, what the manger baby did beyond the manger. The manger matters because it is the beginning of Jesus' story and not the end of his story. The manger matters because of what Jesus did beyond the manger. The manger matters because I don't think the manger matters because I don't think we can separate the manger from the Messiah. Therefore, let us let me cut through the chase and ask the question: what does beyond the manger mean for us? Or better yet, what lessons might we learn from beyond the manger? First of all, the manger suggests. The manger suggests, beyond the manger suggests, your starting place does not have to be your ending place. In other words, where you start in life does not have to be the place where you end up in life. We who know the story of Jesus know that it did not end in the manger. It may, it may have started there, but it, not, it did not end there. When we first met Jesus, he was, he's in the main, when we first met Jesus, he was in the manger, but where did he end up? The record tells us that we now find him seated at the right hand of the Father, 
he sits there today because his starting place was not his ending place. I pray this is helpful and encouraging, that, that this is a helpful and encouraging word to somebody today for your, that your starting place does not have to be your ending place. We all know people who have become comfortable with their manger entrance. They spend too much time living in the manger that they are unwilling to take the necessary steps to move beyond their manger. And here is what I'm suggesting when I speak of manger. I'm speaking of that place where life situations and circumstances are less than ideal, less than ideal. The place where you start out already behind. On the other hand, we know we know we know persons who move beyond their manger and it has made all the difference. So the first thing from the first thing from the beyond the manger is that your beginning place does not have to be your ending place. Secondly, beyond the manger suggests that our ending place is in many instances determined by what that your your that your your ending place in many instances is determined by what you do beyond the manger. In other words, where you end up has a lot to do with how you do life beyond the manger. In other words, where you do life beyond them. I believe it is an accepted fact that people who make who make a difference in the world are people who do something with their lives beyond the manger. In the interest of time, I need not remind you or myself of the difference Jesus made with his life beyond the manger. If you need a reminder, hear his response to the disciples of John who came to him and said and asked of him, saying, John wants to know, are you he who is to come or shall we or shall we look for another? And Jesus, in response to the question posed by John's disciples, said to them, go tell John what you've seen and what you've heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and you know the rest of the story. You know the rest of, of, of Jesus' response. So finally, my brothers and sisters, are we not glad we celebrate? Are we not glad we celebrate a Jesus who, though born in a manger, did not stay there. He moved beyond the manger. And because he did, we have the assurance that our starting places do not have to be our ending places. And because he did, we can become partners with him and give our lives and his cause and the causes of Christ and making the world a better place. Amen. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to each of you. God bless the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. I'm Marvin Frank Thomas, presiding bishop of the Second Episcopal District of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. God bless you.